QuickBooks Pro Plus Desktop 2022 OneNote Presentation, Bank Reconciliation, Myth Busting. Let's get into it with Intuit's QuickBooks Pro Plus Desktop 2022. If you have access to OneNote, would like to follow along, icon left-hand side, topic introduction, 9020 Bank Reconciliation, Myth Busting tab. Also take a look at the Immersive Reader Tool topic introductions in the text area too with the same name, same number, but with transcripts. Transcripts that can be translated into multiple languages and either listened to or read in them. Same name and numbers, presentations as well. Topic introductions designed to give an introduction to the topic, provide screenshots, links where applicable, give accounting background to complement the presentations and can be used to follow along with the presentations if you don't have access to the software at that time. Closing the icon on the left-hand side, starting off with the home page. The first thing we just want to note is that the bank reconciliations have been and remained being an important internal control. They're important to do the main internal control, the guard against us making errors with our financial statements, making misinputs into the system, for example, generating reports that aren't reliable, that we can't be reliant upon. The guard against that primarily is using the double entry accounting system, which QuickBooks forces us to do. You'll note that as you enter information into QuickBooks, QuickBooks actually doesn't let you <laughs> enter data into the system, which will result in the balance sheet not being in balance. That's a huge internal control, but it's only one in internal control. The second huge internal control is going to be some kind of bank reconciliation process because that's going to help you to double check with an outside source, a third source, the bank that you have actually entered all the information correctly into the system, at least with regards to cash, and that uh, that it ties out to that external verification as well, so that you haven't double input anything, misinput anything, or uh, deleted or didn't input anything, at least with regards to cash, and because cash is going to be like the lifeblood of the company, it's involved in every flow, and because there's a double entry accounting system, that means we're also getting verification on the second side. Now, a lot we've heard I've heard some people basically say that the bank reconciliation is no longer a thing anymore because, for example, you might have bank feeds at this point in time making the bank reconciliation obsolete. That's not necessarily the case. That's you, the bank reconciliation process could be changed a bit from the bank feeds, but you still need the bank reconciliation process. Note that if you're in a system where you're kind of reliant on the bank, which we'll talk more about in the future, meaning you're actually just constructing your books from the bank feeds, then you're not going to have as much complexity and you're losing some of the internal controls we'll talk more about in the future, but you're still getting the information from the bank and that information is kind of a, a verification that at least everything that has cleared the bank is something that is in your system. You don't have that same kind of double check in that case, but you're basically constructing your books from the bank. The larger the company gets, the more you're going to want to be doing the full service accounting system. And the more you need an accrual system, the more you're going to need a full service accounting system. So even if you have bank feeds, you won't be able to just construct your books from what clears the bank because you're going to have to enter invoices. You have to enter sales receipts. And because you want that added level of security in internal controls of you entering the data on your end and then verifying, checking it to the bank instead of relying just on the bank to enter the data. We'll talk more about that when we get to the bank feeds, uh, when we get to bank feeds in general, just looking in on the bank feeds. But just want to clarify that as we think about the bank reconciliations, they're going to be important no matter what, what kind of system you're using. Although, again, if you're kind of reliant on the bank, which you could do with some systems, and we'll talk about that when we get to the bank reconciliation area, then it's going to be a more of a simplistic process. There's pros and cons to that but you still you know, want to verify your information to the bank. So we'll get into that, you know, these arguments in more detail in the presentation, but generally the bank reconciliation is going to be comparing our books basically to the bank books. We want to compare the detail of the transactions, which also verifies the other sides of the transactions, which gives us a verification not only over the cash balance, but also with the other balances that are on the balance sheet and the income statement to some degree. And this is a mock bank statement, so we'll go through the bank statements and actually perform the bank reconciliation. We'll do this again when we get to the bank feed center, when we're on a cash basis system. So you can see really what would happen in a very simplistic system where you're kind of pulling your data just from the bank and see how the bank feeds kind of fit into that as well.